Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 5th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storms and us Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Prague, Czech Republic. First, let me start with an item that didn't make it into last Friday's podcast. Microsoft released a critical update for Skype. This fixes a stack-based buffer overflow in the clipboard feature in Skype. It can be exploited without any user interaction from the victim. Microsoft has released an update, so this should download automatically. Just to make sure, check if any new updates are available that you haven't applied yet. And then there was some additional security hoopla about System D. Now, we did have an actual real vulnerability in System D about a week ago. There was a second bug report that the reporter did consider a security vulnerability, but was ultimately rejected as a security vulnerability from the System D team. The problem here is that if your service file that describes a service and the user it should run as if the username starts with a number which basically turns it into an invalid username as far as Unix is concerned then the associated service will run as root not restricted by the particular user. So ultimately this sounds sort of like a privilege escalation but it isn't really a privilege escalation because in order to create such a file the user already has to have access administrator rights otherwise you're not able to edit these system services files so at this point system d is not planning on fixing anything here essentially they're stating it works as designed if you're trying to launch a service using a non-existing or invalid user it will be started as root and Cisco released a security bulletin stating that iOS as well as iOS XE are vulnerable to a buffer overflow in the SNMP subsystem. SNMP is of course a rather old protocol, but it has caused issues in the past, in particular due to its use of ASN.1 encoding. A patch was released by Cisco, so again, go ahead and updated it does affect all versions of snmp version 1 2 and 3 and every so often researchers come up with vulnerabilities that are pretty much obvious and anybody who has ever thought about the security of these systems pretty much should have figured this out without doing a lot of research in this particular case it's if you hand your smartphone to a repair shop and this repair shop will replace parts with a trojan or pre-infected parts that of course can compromise your smartphone. Apple actually got into some hot water about this a while ago where replacements to the screen did invalidate the fingerprint sensor in part because this is a critical security component and Apple is trying to authenticate the component itself and trying to prevent tampering with that component. And a while ago, I talked about the AMT vulnerability in Intel chipsets. AMT stands for Active Management Technology. And back in June, these vulnerabilities were publicly discussed. Well, uh, no surprise that many systems that include Intel CPUs and the associated features are also found in embedded devices like industrial control systems. So Siemens came out with a patch for 30i8 different products that are affected by this particular Intel vulnerability. This is for the most part semantic industrial PCs. So these are more or less regular PCs that just are configured to work well in industrial environments, like they're usually able to deal with higher temperatures and also come in form factors that usually fit into industrial control systems. 
One difficulty in implementing cryptographic libraries is that uh, these libraries, when they execute, are not supposed to give away any properties of the key, which also means that they do have to run equally fast no matter what key is being used. This is a common vulnerability that can often be exploited in side channel attacks. The latest victim here is libgcrypt, which is a library that's also used used, for example, by GPG, the GNU Privacy Guard system, which of course is widely used for encrypted email, for example, also to create digital signatures. An update is available for Ubuntu and Debian Linux, so download it, update it. I don't see this as a real critical vulnerability, but definitely something you don't want to overlook. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. Tomorrow's podcast, I haven't quite decided yet if I'll record or not. Will depend a little bit on how much material we'll have available, but there should be another one on Friday. Thanks and talk to you again either tomorrow or Friday. Bye.